Uh-oh. Am I live? Are we live? I'm trying this from my computer, so it's different. I don't know if I'm live or not. It's like really dark. So we're gonna try this. How do you turn this on? This is my first time going live off a of computer, so. Child, I look a mess, and this screen is dirty. Trying to find something to wipe. Man, this camera on this computer is bad, but we just gonna have to work with it. Cause I think on this computer you can do screen sharing. And if I can, that's what I want to do. Because I want to show y'all some stuff. Because, chow! Who are these people? Now! Why is there lines? That's that light. Okay. Let's go. That's worse. Oh. Yeah, that's the light. My face look oily and everything. Well, anyways, let's get started. Because I do not want to be on here long. Anyways, you guys know about this case. I've talked about it several times. I'm tired of talking about it. I'm tired of dealing with it. But hey... Anyways, this case started in July. I'm not about to backtrack and backdate. If you want to hear about, see about the case, you just got to follow it. Um, 
Where do I start? <laughs> um, the case started in July. We had until April 9th to turn in discovery. What discovery allows is it allows for either side not to be blindsided when trial comes. That's an order from the judge is to turn over. Plaintiffs have to turn over their discovery to the defendants. Defendants have to turn over their discovery to the plaintiffs. Okay. Tell me why this trial started in July of 2020. The discovery that the plaintiffs turned over which would be the people in Colorado Springs. The discovery that they turned over, this, this is the discovery they turned over. Now, tell me how in the world you're suing me for supposedly $75 million saying that I caused you um, that amount of money, missing money, and then I called you social, I caused you to lose your social standing, yet you don't turn in any evidence of how I did this. Make that make sense to me. How, how you, how you, how, how? <laughs> you, you're suing me because you made claims that I caused all this social, sta your social standing in Colorado, which you don't have a social standing. You don't have to, pr I don't, I didn't have to do any of that. All you had to do was look on Google, Google reviews, and you can see how your social standing is in the gutter. All you had to do was talk to people around Colorado Springs and they can tell you that Colorado Springs Fellowship and Rose Banks and what they do in the community, which is not a good name, they can tell you all that. And before I get into this, let me address this. I in no way have an issue with the church. I want, the, I want to make that plainly clear. What I have an issue with is how we have people that claim Christianity. They claim to know Jesus. They claim to be a follower of him. Yet we're doing all this corrupt stuff in the name of Jesus, in the name of God and hiding it under the guise of, oh, this is ministry. I have a problem with that. That's where I have the problem. I don't have a problem. If we're doing church and we're doing ministry, how God has called it and how, how, how he has set it out in the outlines of it. If we're doing ministry, I'm going to back you 110 percent, maybe even a thousand. But I have a I have a real issue when we start getting into witchcraft. I have a real I have a real problem with it. They had an issue when I called the church a cult. Okay, so the definition of a cult is when you put your leader out of place where they are, so they're supposed to be leading you to God, but you switch the two definitions and you put your leader above God and you give them a platform in which they're not supposed to have in the first place and you recognize them and esteem them higher than God. That's what a cult is. Am I wrong? <laughs> Am I wrong? I'm, I'm just trying to see. Let's, 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 let's go deeper. Let's, let's bring up the definition of a cult. If we go to Webster's, where's my glasses at? Because I, I showed the line talking about I can see. I mean, I, I can see 
but I don't like squinting. Okay, here's the definition of a cult. Let me let me show y'all this because people be like, they well, they they be like, oh, he's out here lying on the church. No, I'm not lying. Everything I said, and I'm a screen share if I can. I'm a screen share with you that I made 21 points of stuff that happened while I was in the church, and stuff that I know happened uh, in under the. Uh, the leadership of Rose Banks. I shared 21 points. I have proof of every single point. How how in the world am I lying? I, 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 I and this is what I've asked them. I've asked every single person. There's the uh the people that I was countersuing. I've asked them if I'm lying, what is the lie I'm telling? Please tell me what's the lie I'm telling because once you tell me if I'm lying, okay, if I'm lying, you're lying about this point, this point, and this point. Y'all still ain't pointed that out. I've asked you, I don't know how many times, if I'm lying, what am I lying about? Please tell me that. Let me read the definition of a cult. This is, um, I think this is Webster's Dictionary. You see this? You see where it says cult, and it has the definition right there. The definition of a cult is a particular system of religious worship, especially with reference to its rites and ceremonies, of an instance of greater uh, veneration of a person, what did I just say, ideal or thing, especially as manifested by a body of admirers. The object of such devotion a group or sect bound together by veneration of the same thing, person, ideal. Did not I just give you the definition of a cult? And then I read the Webster's Dictionary of Cult. Where's the variance? Where does it differ? That, that's what I'm trying to understand and see. Where, where does it differ? Because if I'm such a liar, like they say I am, how does all this stuff line up? And how does everybody's... Thank you, Daddy. How does everybody's um, accounts line up? Some of these people I haven't talked to. I've been out of that church since I was seven, I want to say 17 or 18. Hadn't talked to them since then. How does the stories match so much if I'm lying? I, I, I don't understand. Okay. Let's go deeper. So, we had till April 9th to turn in Discovery. Where is the discovery of the plaintiffs? They turned in nothing. And when I say nothing, I'm talking about the only thing they gave me was the address to Colorado Springs Fellowship Church. And then they gave me a bogus website for Lamont Banks to try and prove that he was exonerated. Now, this website. OK, hold on. I'm going to see if I can pull this up so I can show y'all just how crazy this. How do you do screen sharing on here? Y'all, I was trying to be more prepared than this, but I had a meeting right before here. Um, man. Oh, it has to, I don't know why it's not allowing me to screen share. Okay, it's not allowing me to screen share, but they gave a website that looks like it was made by my nephew. My nephew is 
nine, nine years old, I think. Okay, if he was exonerated, which nowhere in the legal files of the case, if you if you find the case number of Lamont Banks, nowhere in the case files does it say that he was exonerated. Then you go to the national exonerees list. His name's nowhere on there. Okay. So you were exonerated and these charges were removed from your name. But yet they, should I say that? <laughs> I'm not gonna say that. So you say you're exonerated. Your name's not on the national exonerees list. Nowhere in the case files that are public because you locked your case say that you were exonerated. You didn't hand over any discovery to prove that, which I've asked for the judge ruling. If you were exonerated from molestation of little girls, let's make that fact clear. Um, Where's the proof of this? Hold on, let me turn this arrow because I am burning up. Hold on. So you're exonerated. Where is the proof? Because you're suing me for telling the truth about this stuff, yet you don't have proof that I'm lying. But I gave you all my discovery to prove the 21 facts, which, hold on, let's, let's rehash this. Let me show you the 21 facts that I said. Hold on. I, want, I just want to make this plain and clear. Um, The facts that I made on every live video that I've done, anything that I have said on social media, I made a record of it. The facts. And if you want me to post these in the comments, I will. <sighs> fact number one. It is a fact that the plaintiffs had people working for the company IRP and submitting time cards to staffing companies not having done any work for the company. That is a fact. It is a fact that the plaintiffs had stalked the defendant and his family by means of social media. I turned in a whole motion to show cause for this with over 300 exhibits. That's a fact. It is a fact that the plaintiffs and the counterparts and the members of a plaintiffs Colorado Springs Fellowship Church and organization A Just Cause ran a smear campaign harassing and humiliating and slandering the defendant. That is a fact. I have every single screenshot and it's still on social media, even though they tried to remove it. But thanks be unto God that he made screenshots. Because you guys went behind trying to hide your tail and tried to remove what you did. But I got it. That is a fact. <clears throat> it is a fact that the plaintiffs destroyed the evidence of the smear campaign and to try and solidify their case against the defendant. That is a fact. You did this smear campaign July in July. You took down your smear campaign, most of it, and then days later, I get a call from a process server that you're trying to serve me with papers to try and sue me. How crooked, how, how crooked is that? 
You have your members and your so-called so nonprofit organization take to social media, try and smear my name, not only in social media, but also in the church that I now go to. Then you try and take this smear campaign down because you went to a Colorado court to try and add a lawsuit or a complaint to try and sue me for telling the truth, which is my opinion. Not only is it opinion, but it's fact. You did all that, and then you tried to hide it? How, how crooked is that? But I'm the one lying. Okay, let's keep going, because I don't, don't, don't want to be on here long. It is a fact that the plaintiffs have held many members under spiritual, mental, emotional bondage in their ministry. That is a fact. That is a fact. And then they want to say, well, if it was so bad, why did you stay so long? Sweetheart, I was raised in this church. What do you mean, why did I stay so long? You realize if I would have left when I wanted to, which I was younger, my mom, my dad, all three of my brothers are still in the church. Where am I going to go? If I left, where am I going to go? But you say, well, why did you stay so long? I mean, is, is, that, is that not apparent? Is that not obvious? I'm, I'm just trying to see. Then you got people, you asking this same question, why did you stay so long? You got whole people trying to fight and keep their marriage together because they know if they left, they would not have a marriage. If they had kids, they wouldn't be able to see or talk to their kids anymore because that is the rule. If you don't go to the church, she will have your spouse divorce you and you can't talk to your kids, can't see your kids. That is a fact. You tried to do it to my mother. When my dad left the church, you told her to divorce my dad. We're all grown. So, I mean, it's not going to affect us like it, like it would have if we were younger. But it is a fact that you said that. Pastor Rose Banks, that is a fact. Not only did you do it to her, but so many other people that you did it to over the years of going to Colorado Springs Fellowship. That is a fact. Let's keep going because I'm on here at 22 minutes. I'm... I'm going to try and get off at 50 minutes and keep it an hour, maybe. <clears> Hold <throat> oh, no, on, I didn't get to the mind-blowing stuff. Y'all stay, stay with me, because when I get to the mind-blowing stuff, y'all hold on to your seats. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. It is a fact that the plaintiff Rose Banks caused a repossession to be on my parents' record because she told them to take back a car that was bought for their sons. That is a fact. It was a gold, uh, was it a Buick? It was, uh, I think it was like a Buick LaCrosse something. A gold Buick LaCrosse. They purchased the car, was going to give it to me and my brother because we had just moved out of a town, uh, out, of, out of the house. Not only we had to move because you told them to put us out. So we moved into a townhouse. They got us a car so we can get back and forth to work. You told them to take the car back. That's a fact. That wasn't her money. That wasn't her credit that that was going to fall back on. <clears throat> Let's go. It is a fact that plaintiff Rose Banks lives off the members of Colorado Springs Fellowship Church. She is not employed. That is a fact. Now let me explain this fact so we can go deeper in this fact. Again, let me tell you, I do not have a problem with the church. I have a problem when we get on the grounds of witchcraft and abusing the people of God. I have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with people giving to their leader. I The Bible says if you are up preach of the gospel, you ought to live of the gospel. That's what the Bible says. So... <clears throat> I don't have an issue with people sowing into their pastor's life. Do you not understand what your pastor, if you have a real leader, do you not understand 
the the life the pastor has to live and the things they have to go to go through just to be able to bring a word to you on Sunday. They might just only preach on Sunday morning, but they are in a week's worth of warfare trying to bring to you an hour's message. If they preach that long. And they have to do this every week. Sometimes pastors preach multiple times a week in their congregation. So I don't have a problem with nobody supporting their pastor, but I have a problem with the abuse of it. So in Colorado Springs Fellowship, <clears throat> there were so many pledges that were done. And if you did not meet this pledge, you stood the, the you stood the uh, the task of either being removed from the church, being punished by being uh, uh, put on a fast that she called. She was good with saying, don't eat till I tell you. She was good with doing that. So you had to make a pledge. And, and I'm not talking about one pledge. I'm talking about multiple pledges a month. Now, she wasn't even supposed to be doing these pledges anyways because she got in trouble in Germany for doing this. There's a case. If you look up Rose Banks and just type in Germany or whatever, Bamberg Fellowship. I think that's the name of it was when it was in Germany. Just look it up. There's a whole lawsuit against her for the pledges that she was collecting in Germany. And I, this is not, this is my opinion. I don't know if this is true, but I believe that's the reason she left Germany. Don't pin me for it. That is, that is uh, speculation. I don't know. I didn't know her back then. I don't know. But I believe that's the reason she left Germany. Um, but yes, that's a fact. Several pledges during the month. Um, Easter pledges. Why are we pledging to you for Easter? I mean, this is the we're, we're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but you're asking for a Easter pledge. I, that I never understood. Like, why, why, why? <laughs> Pledges for when she went out of town. The members paid for her vacations. The members paid for her cars and her house. So you say, you say you're suing me for uh, supposedly $75 million. And I say supposedly because I don't know the amount. I still don't know the amount. But there was an article that the amount is $75 million. <laughs> So you're saying that I caused you this amount of damages. You realize in order to prove that, you have to prove that I damaged the pockets of every single member of Colorado Springs Fellowship. Because that's where you get your money from. <sighs> Come on now. Y'all, do you see how nonsense this case is? It's stupid at the core. I just, <laughs> I, I, sometimes it's just unfathomable. Like, how dumb? How dumb? I have to sometimes ask the Lord, Lord, what are you doing? Why is this even being allowed? Because this is how stupid this is. It's a waste of my time, a waste of the court's time, that this is even getting attention like how stupid every lawyer that i have talked to they have literally sat on the phone and laughed because it's so stupid anyway let's keep going because I'm, 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 I'm trying to get out this thing <clears throat> it is a fact that the plaintiff's role i'm not going through all these <laughs> I'm, I'm, what I'm going to do, because I'm, I'm trying to save time, I'm going to post all these facts. I'm going to post them in the comments, because I want to get to the juicy part of this uh, this live. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to post them in the comments. Let me go ahead and I'm going to post them right now. So, um...
How do you post pictures? That's what I'm gonna send you these pictures. Post these in the uh, post these in the uh, comments. Okay, so I sent interrogatories to the plaintiffs. Now, I am going to read all the interrogatories because I'm going to read to you their answers. I sent interrogatories to the plaintiffs. When you send interrogatories, they have 30 days to answer the interrogatories. The answers that I got back, I, I had to sit down because it, it was just mind blowing. You cause all this damage to different people and by the standings of what you do in your church, then when it comes time for you to answer for what you did, you want to try and run and hide under the guise of being clergy? Of, of being clergy. <clears throat> That's what she used. And I'm I'm going to show it to y'all because you're probably like, oh, he lying. No, let me show you. That's what she did. She hid under the fact of being clergy. Let me find this email from their lawyer. Now, these questions, because I'm going to read to you these questions. These questions are so plain and straight to the point. Nobody's going to say, oh, <clears throat> well, what was he trying to get at? Or did he misquote this question? No, 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 no. These questions are so plain and straight to the point. A little baby that just started talking would understand these questions. But this is the plaintiff, what she did. Hold on, let me turn my phone sideways so y'all can see this plainly. Do you see that? It says Plaintiff Rose Banks and Plaintiff Colorado Springs Fellowship Church further objects as many of the interrogatories request a breach of the clergy parishioner privilege. Now, what the clergy parishioner privilege is, is if I tell, if let's say if I went to my pastor and I told him something in confidence, if, if they were sued or something happened, they could say, well, I'm not going to answer this <clears throat> because it's a confidential right of my members that they came to me in confidence, so I don't have to say this. But the privilege can be uh, um, taken back if a judge demands that you answer that. If it's um, if it's a fact of uh, uh, like life and death situation, something like that, that permission to reinstate that can be taken away from you. But this is the thing: How did you instate a clergy parishioner privilege when I didn't ask you any questions about anybody else except for what you did? These questions are personal. They're about you and stuff you did as the pastor of uh, Colorado Springs Fellowship, Colorado Springs Fellowship as a whole, and Lamont Banks. These are personal questions. And they'll have nothing to do with nobody else. I'm not suing anybody else. Uh, <laughs> my issue is, re is a reinstatement of the claim that y'all put, put me in. Okay, <clears throat> let me read to you these questions. How many pledges a year do you receive from the members of Colorado Springs Fellowship Church? How does that involve with anybody else? Because that's not confidential. It's not confidential to anybody because whether, or, whether you know it or not, you still got to claim taxes on that.
Let me say that again because she probably, you still got to claim taxes on that. Anyways, so I asked, you get 25 interrogatories to ask. They answered the exact same to every interrogatory. Now, like I told you before, these questions are plain and clear. You can't, you can't miss, oh, was he trying to get some state a different point? No, these questions are plain and clear. Their answer to every interrogatory was objected to as vague, improper, overly broad, unduly burdensome, and not reasonably calculated to lead to the discovery of admissible evidence. How? You're suing me for what I said on social media. You're suing me for the points that I made, which Justice is going to put those in the comments, but you then say, that it's not going to lead to discovery of admissible evidence. This is the answer to what you're suing me for. So how is it not going to lead to evidence? How? I'm, I'm just... How? Question number two. And <clears throat> These questions are just to Rose Banks right now. I'll get to Lamont Banks' questions in a minute. Have you ever conducted meetings in which members were instructed to make their pledge amount and commitments in the other members into the other members of the church? They answered the same way. Three, have you ever told members that uh, they should have or they should have or could have pledged or given more? Y'all see how plain and comprehend the answer to this question. So you answered as objected to as vague, improper, overly broad, unduly burdensome, and not reasonably calculated to lead to discovery of admissible evidence. How did you not get what I said? Number four, has anyone ever inquired of members as to when they would be paying their pledges after committing to a certain amount? So basically, has anybody ever went to a member, if, if I said I'm sowing $1,500 into whatever pledge that you had running that month, if I'm sowing $1,500, have you ever had somebody go back to that member and tell them or ask them, hey, where's your pledge money? Is not that what the question just asked? Okay. I'm just checking. Number five, who do the members have to go and check off their church obligations with, and what are the multiple church obligations that are asked of from the church members? That's a clear and precise question, because unfortunately, you're one of the churches that have had a building fund for over 30-some years, yet y'all are still renting a building. If I'm paying into a building fund, yet we still don't have an edifice, what are you doing with our money? What are you doing with the money? We still don't have an edifice to worship in. We're still renting and still paying church rent out of our tithes and our offering. But yet on top of that, we're still giving a building fund. You're still having them paying, um, uh, what is it called, broadcast fees when you ain't on nobody's broadcast. Where? What are you doing with all this money? Okay, I'm just checking. Number six, when is the last time you filed taxes? Rose Banks. When's the last time you filed taxes? Because, like I said earlier, you're getting pledges. You have to file taxes on that money. Okay, just checking. I just wanted to get that out. I just want to get that out there. Number seven. Did you ever inform the parishioners, members of the Colorado Springs Fellowship Church, that the defendant, Terrell Jackson, has had, not this, is they redid this question because I didn't say that, that the defendant, Terrell Jackson, has had or ever had AIDS? 
Did you tell the members of Colorado Springs Fellowship that Terrell Jackson had AIDS? Did you tell them that? How, and you answered that the same way you answered any other question. Objected to as vague, improper, overly broad, unduly burdensome, and not reasonably calculated to lead to the discovery of admissible evidence. All I'm asking you, did you go to the church members of Colorado Springs Fellowship and say this? Because for one, I've never told you anything. Two, I've never made that statement. But did you tell the members of Colorado Springs Fellowship that? Still waiting. Number eight, did you advise Yolanda Jackson to divorce her husband, Lucius Jackson? Answer the question the same way. Now, how you didn't comprehend that question, I, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to see, I'm trying to see. Number 10, why aren't, <clears throat> why aren't your cars or house in your name? Now, I wrote an article, uh, the article, if you go to the article that I wrote earlier when this case first started, you'll see the article. Um, the article is called, um, uh, what is that article called? Um, hold on. Uh, the article Hold on, I'm going to find the article so y'all can, if you want to read it, you can, because it's still up. Oh, it's called The Tale of the Hidden Pedophile. I wrote an article, and in the article, now, check this out. Whenever I posted something on social media that they thought um, had went to them or whatever it was associated with them, they made a motion to send it to the court to say, look what Terrell Jackson just did, or look what he posted about us. Okay, so now this article came out. Ooh, it was silent. Never heard anything from their lawyer. Because you know what? If you bring it to the court's attention, you have to prove that it's wrong. So they're the plaintiffs. I'm the defendant. So all these 21 points that I made, the plaintiffs bear the burden of proving what I said was wrong. So if they bring this article, the tale of the pedophile, the hidden pedophile, if they bring that to the court, now I gotta tell, I gotta show that what he's talking about in that article is wrong. So I wrote this article, you didn't hear about this article nowhere. None of them church people that was harassing people on social media, none of them said nothing about it. Not a word. Okay, but you bring up postings that I've done and you send them to the court saying, hey, Terrell Jackson's still talking about us. Look what he said. Okay, so why didn't you bring up this article? You want to know why they didn't? Because you can never prove that it was wrong. Even the stuff that I've already said, you can never prove it's wrong because you know it's all true. But in this article, this leads to the question of, I said, why aren't your cars or your, uh, your house in your name? Because the house, if you look it up, this is public knowledge. I'm not going in anybody's business. The church, I mean, not the church, the, uh, the house that she lives in, in Colorado Springs, is in three names. It's in Colorado Springs Fellowship's name, it's in Daisy Bowden's name, and it's in Norman Bowden's name. If you read the article of the tale of the hidden pedophile, guess who the article is talking about? Just go read it. How about that? Just go read it. Let's go back to these questions. My dog just coughed. Sorry. Um, number 11. Did you remove Lucius and Yolanda Jackson from Colorado Springs Fellowship Church for placing a down payment on a townhouse for their children, Derek and Terrell? And when I say remove... One of the biggest achievements for Pastor Rose Banks in Colorado Springs Fellowship 
One of her biggest achievements is to say, get out and don't come back. That is one of her highest living, uh, 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 I don't even know what the word to say is. That is one of her famous goals is to be able to put you out. That is a, uh, that is a, uh, uh, what do you call it? A power move for her. It's because she's in control. I can put you out whenever I want to. My parents were put out for over a year because they gave a down payment on a townhouse to get us so we're not living on the streets because you told them to put us out of their house. I was, I think I was 15 or 16 when this happened. Um, but I wasn't in the church. Um, so I didn't know that they had got put out for that. I didn't know. Because we, I wasn't talking to them. Well, it wasn't. I was. It's not that I wasn't talking to them. They were told to not talk to me. So I didn't know that. But you were. You put them out for over a year, because they were making sure that their children had a roof over their head. Okay. Number twelve. Were you found guilty for receiving unauthorized pledges in Germany? Now, let me read to you the answer for this one, because it's the same, but let me just read it to you so you remember what it was. Objected to as vague, improperly, improper, overly broad, unduly burdensome, and not reasonably calculated to lead to the discovery of admissible evidence. Okay, I asked you a plain, simple question. Were you found guilty for receiving unauthorized pledges in Germany? Now, it is a legal case. It's public knowledge. It's already out there. All they had to do is research. It's out there. You can pull up the whole case. You can read how many times people gave to her. Um, uh, what else is on that case? It's, it's public. It's a public case. So why did you say you didn't comprehend that question when all you had to do was say yes? I was found guilty for receiving unauthorized pledges in Germany. Number 13, <clears throat> what were the findings of the investigation in Germany? Did you agree to disband the system of pledges in the church as a result of the investigation in Germany? Again, if you read the article, the answer to this question is in the article. Why did you not comprehend that question? I don't know. Sounds fishy to me. Have you ever used the phrase, number 14, don't eat until I tell you against any patron of Colorado Springs Fellowship? They answered the same. Meaning, don't eat till I tell you. I was put on a fast like that, and I think I went seven days. I think it was seven days. I can't remember. I, mean, I don't even remember what the... Um, I don't even remember what, what I got in trouble for. Um, I, I don't think it was that. No. I think it was, I think I got in trouble for, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was when I told Kia that she, that, uh, that she wasn't, because, okay, so everybody knows the Jackson family called Rose Banks Mimi. We didn't really have a relationship with our grandmother. Now, this was their words. They were the ones that said, your family don't care about you. We're your family now. Okay, so we called Miss Rose Mimi. Is Because uh, she don't like being called grandma. So we called her Mimi. We called her daughter, Aunt Juana, Uncle Amos, uh, Aunt Nisi, Uncle Gary. That's what we did. We didn't have family that we could talk to or better yet a relationship with our family. So, okay, we're taking your advice. You said you'd be our family. Okay, let's step up to the plate. Okay. 
the only person that had a problem with us calling them that was Kia Banks. I don't understand why she always had an issue. Don't call her Mimi. Now, <laughs> when we were around the house, we called Miss Rose Mimi all the time. She would answer to it. Hey, Mimi, you want this done? Uh, if we were changing out her clothes, Mimi, uh, if we were asking her questions, anything. If we were around the house, they never had a problem with it. The only person that had a problem with it was Kia Banks. <laughs> so I got upset one day. Now, I don't know if this was the reason why I was put on this fast. I don't know. That was so many years ago. I don't know. But I got upset with her, and I answered her back. I said, okay, you don't want us to call her grandma, but you're not even blood. You were married into the family. <laughs> was that wrong? <laughs> was that a lie? Your mother married David Banks. You're not his kid. So why are you getting upset with me for calling Rose Banks Mimi when, for one, she said that. Aunt Juana said that. We can call them that. But you're the only one that had a problem with it. Now, this is neither here nor there because I don't care what she said. I, I don't care. I never did care. Um, I was just tired of hearing it from her. But anyways, I don't know that's why, but why I had to get on the fast. I don't know. I don't remember. But anyways... Um, number 15, did you tell or advise your daughter, Yolanda Banks Walker, to divorce her husband for being a traitor? Or have you ever advised your member or supported church members who left Colorado Springs Fellowship? So have you ever told anybody basically to get a divorce? Have you ever? How did, how you didn't understand that question? Again, I, I it's my, I don't know. Maybe that's why I named this mind blowing because it's mind blowing lies. Maybe that's why I named it that. I don't know. Um, number 16. Have you ever told or advised any patron of Colorado Springs Fellowship to divorce? So I asked her that question again. Um, have you ever advised any patron of Colorado Springs Fellowship to remove their children from their home? What is that? Have you ever advised them to move, remove their children from their home? So basically tell them to put their children out. Have you ever done that? Again, they answered the question the same. Here's that question I was talking to y'all about earlier. Everybody say Terrell Jackson is out there lying on the church. He's telling all these lies on Luana Banks. He's telling all these lies on Rose Banks, Pastor Rose Banks. He's telling all these lies on Colorado Springs Fellowship. Okay, if I am lying so much, what is the lie that I'm telling? That was what I asked in number 18. What lies has the defendant Terrell Jackson told? Because I can tell you, I ain't said nothing that's a lie. Everything I've said about this case, about them, is the absolute truth. But since, let me play your game real quick. If I'm lying, what lie did I tell? Still waiting. <sighs> Number 19. Did you ever call into a radio show for A Just Calls? And have you ever discussed the Jacksons on the radio show? Answer the question the same. Now, this is how these people lie. When I tell you, these people have been lying through their teeth. It, it makes you stumble at how people can lie like this and still shout around the church, still say they proclaim in the name of Jesus Christ, still try and speak in tongues, still try and be a pastor, but you sit here and lie like this. You can't say that I'm lying about that. Because we have the recording of you when you called into the radio show and you badmouthed my family on the radio show. We have the recording. If you think we don't have it, I turned it into evidence when we were supposed to. I turned it in with my discovery. It's there. Ask your lawyer to show it to you. So you can't say I'm lying.
Next question. <laughs> Baffling. Ugh. Have you ever, number 20, have you ever advised the parishioners to take out insurance policies and deed them to the church? So if I take out an insurance policy and the beneficiary is my children, you want me to take out another insurance policy and the beneficiary name it as Colorado Springs Fellowship. How crooked is that? <laughs> Child. 21, who keeps the ledgers of incoming monies from Rose Banks? Does the bank keep them? Or does your family members keep them of how much money that you're, get, that you're getting in? Because all pledges are recorded on a sheet in that church. I've seen the sheets. But they'll say I'm lying. Yeah. 22, did you ever have knowledge of any... Let me, let me read this question slow. Did you ever have knowledge of any kids being molested in your church? They answered this the same as any other question. Has it ever been brought to the attention of Rose Banks that a kid was ever molested in your church? How you didn't, uh, how you didn't understand that question? You probably didn't understand it because you've hid all of the molestations. Ooh. That's probably why you didn't understand it. Next question. Did you bring pictures to the church of Lawana Clark on her deathbed and blame the church members for the death of Lawana Clark? Now, Lawana Clark is her daughter that died a few years ago from a stroke. She took pictures of Luana Clark on her deathbed. Now, I stated this in a, a, a former video. Miss Juana was very private. Um, there were not many people that did not see that uh, that saw Miss Juana if she wasn't dolled up. Uh, we saw her uh, saw her like that. Um, just because we was at, we was literally at Miss Juana's house every single day. So we saw her um, when she wasn't made up for church. Now she probably, uh, yeah, we saw her in the raw. Not, I mean, like in her, her uh, she wore house dresses around the house all the time. And she wore a black uh, um, cap on her head. Um, all the time. That's how we saw her. If we was sitting down on the couch watching TV with her, she had that on. Or if we, she was in her bed watching TV, we was on the floor, she had that on. We saw her like that. How she was on her deathbed, she, I know for a fact, she would never have wanted anyone to see her like that. But you took a picture of your daughter and brought it to the church and said, look what y'all did to my daughter. Next question. 24, have you ever told advised church members to pay their church obligations before or instead of their car payment, rent or non-church bills? That's a self-explanatory question. Yet you answered it the same. Mm -hmm. Next question, 25. Was there a life insurance policy that named you as a beneficiary in the event of Lanita's death? Did the insurance company pay a death benefit to you upon her death? What reason did they state for not paying? There's a huge story behind that question, which I don't have even time to get into. I'm at an hour right now. 
Um, I can tell you this because she was questioned in the death of her daughter. How did you come to the church and tell the church that in 30 days, the Lord told you that he was coming to get Lanita? And in 30 days, not 31 days, 30 days, your daughter was gone. How? If Jesus don't even know when he's coming back, how did you know when your daughter was going to leave this world? How? All right, that it was 25. That was the questions for Rose Banks. Let's go to the questions of Lamont Banks. Why were you removed from the membership of Colorado Springs Fellowship Church? The easiest question and the easiest answer, because I ran the biggest church scandal, sex scandal. That's why I was removed from Colorado Springs Fellowship. That's all you had to say to answer that question. Me and my brother, uh, what's his name? Uh, Charles Banks Jr., we ran the biggest sex scandal in Colorado Springs Fellowship. That's why we was put out of church. That was the answer to that question, Lamont, if you didn't remember. I'm just saying. That was the answer to that question. <laughs> Number two, did you state that you were exonerated from the charges of sexual misconduct of a minor? Did you ever state that? All you do is answer that question. He answered the questions the exact same. Number three, how did you come across any post or Facebook on Facebook from myself or my brother or anyone from the church if you're not friends with them on Facebook on any social media? How did you come across our post? Because I've never been friends with anybody from Colorado Springs Fellowship Church. So how did you come up across our post? Because I don't put my post up in ads so they don't just pop up on your social media. You have to literally type in my name, Terrell Jackson, on social media, search for me, then you get to a page that's gonna bring up several Terrell Jacksons, then you gotta look through that list and click on mine and read through my post. How did you come across those posts? Number four, what year were you removed from Colorado Springs Fellowship Church for sexual misconduct? Number five, did you have sexual relationships with multiple women in Colorado Springs Fellowship Church? These answers are so simple. You could have answered yes to that. Some of the women are still sitting in that church. Oh, Lord. Number six. Were you in contact with Terrell Jackson, the defendant, on December 29th, 2019, as this is the date a sit-down was requested from the defendant? Did you ever contact me or did you ever talk to me on any social media on December 29th, 2019? He answered the question the same. The answer to that question was yes. Because I have a screenshot of you talking to me on December 29, 2019. I have a screenshot of the conversation. It's in my discovery. You know, the stuff that we were supposed to turn over. The deadline was April 9th. You know that stuff? It's in my discovery. Ask your lawyer for it. You'll see it. Number seven. Around what age was the defendant Terrell Jackson when you were last in the church, Colorado Springs Fellowship Church, Colorado Springs Fellowship on Academy Boulevard in Colorado Springs. Because I think I was at least seven, six or seven when you were put out to church. So now you come back, what is it, 10, 15, 20 years later, and you are harassing me on social media about all this stuff that you know nothing about. You weren't even there. <laughs> so who told you all this stuff? Because you weren't there. <laughs> wow. Number eight. Here's that question again. Y'all keep saying Terrell Jackson is lying on the church. 
Terrell Jackson out there lying on Pastor Rose Banks. He out here just lying. Okay, if I'm lying, number eight, what lies has the defendant Terrell Jackson told? If I'm lying, if I'm doing all this lying, my God. The Bible says a lie won't a liar won't tarry in my sight. It even says all liars. They're gonna be cast into the lake of fire. Which burn with fire and brimstone. That's what the Bible say. Okay. I'm out here just lying on the church. I'm lying on Pastor Rose Banks. Man. What lies am I telling? I want to know. Because if I'm lying. A person has good moral standard. And good upright. Uh, that wants to live upright. I want to know what lies I done told. So I can say oh my God. I've been lying on the church. And man. I'm so sorry. But you won't even answer the question of what lies I'm telling. I've asked you, I know I've asked them probably a good 10, 15 times. What lies am I telling? I want to know what lies I'm telling so I can tell you why I said the statement I said. Because I have proof of everything I said. All the statements that I made against Colorado Springs Fellowship, against Pastor Rose Banks, against, against Lamont Banks, all the proof. It's in the discovery that I didn't turn in. Ask your lawyer to see it. The proof is there. But y'all still say I'm lying. That's like saying... I'm going to take these CDs and use them as an example. That's like saying these are CDRW, I mean CDRs, 700 megabytes. They're made by Verbatim. That's the company that makes them. And I'm going to show you the proof. Terrell, lying on this CD company. Those aren't CDRs. They ain't made by Verbatim. They, ain't, they don't have 700 megabytes. I'm showing you the proof right here. This what this what this what the company got on their uh, marketing of what this CD does. What's the name of it and the company that makes it? I'm showing you proof. Terrell lying. He lying. Here's proof. Terrell lying. That's that's what it, that's what y'all doing. Terrell out here lying all this on this stuff. I didn't turn in my discovery and proved my statements. Terrell out there lying on the church. What lie? <laughs> what lie? I'm I'm still trying to figure it out. <sighs> Help us over here. Number nine. Who told you anything about the Jackson family or Terrell Jackson or Dustin Jackson in the church as you were not there for over 20 years? You weren't there. So all this stuff that you're saying that Terrell did or, he, or what he said, how would you know any of that? Because you weren't there. So who told you all this information? Who told you all the information that you are uh, broadcasting on your web show of a just cause about IRP solutions, who told you all that information? Because you weren't there. Hmm. Number 10. What year did you enter into a prison sentence? Because Lamont Banks went to prison for the same stuff I said he did. He went to prison for that. Now, if you was as guilty as you say you was, why did why did you go to prison? Okay, I'm just asking. I just want, I just want to know. I just want to know. Number eleven. Who gave the go? The go ahead and orchestrated the smear campaign from employees and volunteers of a just cause and members of Colorado Springs Fellowship Church. Who gave the go? Now, you can't say nobody because 
in all of the things that they were saying against me, the things that they were saying on other different smear campaigns, and not hold on, let me let me show you proof. Hold on. All of these said, if you want this fact checked, or if you have questions about this, contact Lamont Banks, the executive director of A Just Cause. Here's proof. Right here. This is one of the articles that they wrote. It says, exposing slander. This was wrote by Ari Houghton. She's an employee or volunteer How did, of A uh, uh, Just Cause. You see that right there? Right there at the bottom. Right there. What does that say? Questions, contact, Lamont Banks. So the question I asked you was who gave the go-ahead or orchestrated the smear campaign? Who did that? Well, your employees just answered that question because I just showed you So is, is Terrell Jackson still lying? Is he still lying? Huh. Okay. I'm just I'm just asking. I'm just trying to see. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. I, I don't know. Number 12. Have you ever placed your number or contact information as a verification of any slanderous post about any current or past members? of Colorado Springs Fellowship Church. Have you ever done that? Okay. Let me show you more proof, because they're going to say, wow, Terrell, out, he's still out there lying on the church. He's still out there lying on the church. Here's another post that was made by your employees or volunteers of a just cause. Guess whose contact information is at that bottom of the post? <laughs> Does that say contact information um, of Lamont Banks for more information? That's what that. Now I know I was I was uh, um, taught how to read probably in kindergarten or preschool. One of them. Now I know I'm reading this right. This say for more info, contact Lamont Banks. That's a AJC executive director, and it has that number. Now I I know I'm reading this right. Right? Y'all tell me if I can't read, because if I can't read, I, I need to get off here and go go find hooked on phonics because I can't read. Y'all tell me what that what does that say? Not only what does what does that say? Well child, here's another post. What's the post say? For more info, contact Lamont Banks. Both of them say that. I don't know if I can read or not. Okay. I'm I'm just I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering. Number 13, when did you become executive director at the nonprofit Adjust Cause? Simple question. When did you become the executive executive director? All you had to do was answer the year that you came, became executive director. Except you answered with objected to as vague, improper, overly broad, unduly burdensome, and not reasonably calculated evidence. This is the question I have. If y'all had nothing to hide, why didn't you answer these questions? If you had nothing to hide, these are simple questions. Why didn't you answer these questions? If you ain't got nothing to hide, you serve me with interrogatories. You got an answer back to every single interrogatory. Okay. I'm just wondering. Number 14, what are the duties? What are your duties as an executive director at the nonprofit at Just Cause? Simple answer. Answered it back same way. Number 15, were you ever told from Pastor Rose Banks that you would never be allowed back 
to the church, Colorado Springs Fellowship. Did your, did your mother ever tell you that? Simple answer. Number 16, what is your role and responsibility at Colorado Springs Fellowship Church? Simple answer. What do you do at the church? They didn't answer that, by the way. Now, these are the questions for Colorado Springs Fellowship Church. Y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm hurrying. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm hurrying. Why are parishioners of Colorado Springs Fellowship Church instructed to pay a building fund? And why has a church building never been constructed with the building fund? Now, the church, when they first moved here, they were on A Street in Colorado, in Colorado Springs. This is how I know that the building fund has been in, in order since the church has moved here. Because in the foyer of Colorado Springs Fellowship, there is a picture of the final, supposed to be the final church of Colorado Springs Fellowship, the final edifice of what she wants built. There is a picture. That same picture when we watch tapes of 8th Street, South 8th Street in Colorado Springs Fellowship, guess what was in the video? That same picture that hangs on the wall of the final edifice of Colorado Springs Fellowship. That same picture is on the wall on 8th Street. Okay, so that tells me that you've had a building fund for all them years. The church been in Colorado Springs since 1990, probably before then. That's over 30 years. You've been collecting a building fund, yet no building has been constructed. Where's the people's money? Where's the people's money? <laughs> Anyways, number two, when was the building fund of Colorado Springs Fellowship Church initiated? So if I got this wrong, if the building fund ain't been there since South A Street, which I know I'm not wrong, because that same picture that you had above, so the picture hangs there, and then under the picture, there is a huge board that used to be there um, that said building fund. And on the building fund, there was each member of the church and then it had, uh, I think it had the months, and uh, there was like little tabs of when they paid their building fund on that month. So if I'm wrong, let me get this right. When was the building fund initiated? Number four, number three, sorry. What are the beliefs of Colorado Springs Fellowship Church? The reason why I ask this, because on the website, the beliefs of Colorado Springs Fellowship were never there until recently. Guess what page pops up on Colorado Springs Fellowship's website? The beliefs of Colorado Springs Fellowship. So you don't have to answer that. I mean, you can answer it if you want to, but they didn't answer it. They answered it the same way because they objected to it. Um, anyway, let's go. Number four, has there ever been any hidden cases of child molestation in the church, in which case the proper authorities were never notified? Has anybody ever told you that, I, hey, my child has been molested in the church? Did you ever tell the cops, the proper authorities? Has that ever happened in your church? Go read the article, The Tale of the Hidden Pedophile. Go read it. Number five, who is the pastor of Colorado Springs Fellowship Church and are they licensed to lead as a minister or pastor? Self-explanatory question. Easy question. If she's a minister, a, a licensed or ministered or ordained minister, all you have to do is say yes. And the pastor of the church is Rose Banks. That's all you had to answer. They objected to the question and answered it the same. Oh, no, no. Here's another answer. So they said the pastor is Rose Banks who possesses whatever authorization 
if any are required to serve as a pastor. What do you mean if any are required? Do you know the role of a pastor? You have to marry people, bury people, do all this stuff. You know you can't marry people if you aren't ordained. That means if you married people and you don't hold a license, them people ain't married. What do you mean if it's required? Child. Number six, who are the current and past board members of Colorado Springs Fellowship Church? Simple question, simple answer, yet they objected to it. Number seven, when is the last time Colorado Springs Fellowship Church filed taxes? objected to it and then they add, added this nevertheless the church files its required tax information as required by the governmental authorities if you don't have nothing to hide why are you running from these questions if you have nothing to hide i don't know number eight what is the filing status of colorado springs fellowship church they objected to it, but then they answered, uh, however, the church is a 501c3 organization as registered with the IRS. Okay. Number nine, does the church, Colorado Springs Fellowship, have corporate housing, and who is in charge of the corporate housing? They objected to the answer. Because as long as I've lived... And been a member, ha, had been a member, church ain't never had no corporate housing. Number 10, what are the rules of the corporate housing of Colorado Springs Fellowship? They didn't answer it, they objected to it. Same answer, they didn't. Number 11, have any of the past, um, the, of the members ever been removed from the church for not paying pledges or any church obligation. They objected to it, didn't answer it. Number 12, are any members allowed to visit or fellowship with any other churches? And when was the last time the church or parishioners have fellowshiped with any other church? I asked that question because in Colorado Springs Fellowship, you better not go to no other church. You, mm. Number 13, are the members of Colorado Springs Fellowship Church allowed to go out of town without the permission of the pastor? They objected to it, didn't answer it, because you know the answer to? No. If you go anywhere, you better make sure the pastor knows. Now, on that note, no, because that don't even, I don't even need to say that because it don't even, that don't even apply to that situation. Why do I need to tell you I'm going out of town and get permission to go? And if you say no and I still go, don't come back. Why? Um, number 14, has any member been bound to a budget and the pastor and or counselor of the church had to clear any purchases made for that prospective member? So you put me on a budget and anything I buy, I need to clear it through you. That's a simple answer question. They objected to it, didn't answer it. 15, has any member of Colorado Springs Fellowship Church been openly reprimanded in front of the church? Simple answer, didn't answer it, objected to it.
16, has any member's marriage issues or inadequacies in marriage been openly disclosed to church members through a church meeting or sermon? They objected to it, didn't answer to it. If you look up the case of Rose Banks and, uh, um, it's not Washington, um, Rose Banks and somebody else, I can't remember, um, she was sued for that and lost the lawsuit, by the way. So all you had to do was say yes to that question, but you objected to it and didn't answer it. <laughs> Number 17, are the members of Colorado Springs Fellowship Church ever asked or advised to retrieve any furniture or items given by the pastor or church after any disagreement or termination of membership? Simple answer, you objected to it, didn't answer. Number 18, what are the names of the current or past church counselors? Simple answer, you didn't answer it. There's only been a few church counselors, Rose Banks, uh, Daisy Bowden, LaWanna Clark, and recently um, in the past, what, 10 years, uh, Lisa uh, Stewart became a counselor. That's all you had to answer, but instead you objected to it and didn't answer it. What are you hiding? Number 19, are any monies associated with Colorado Springs Fellowship given to the pastor as income or gift or the same or any to any current or past church counselors? Simple answer, you objected to it and didn't answer. <laughs> Number 20, are members of the Colorado Springs Fellowship Church told or ever advised not to speak to any family members that are not in the church or have removed their membership? Simple answer, didn't answer it. You know how many families have been broken up because of Colorado Springs Fellowship and the advice of Pastor Rose Banks? It's a simple answer question. You say I'm lying, but there's so many people that have never spoken to their mother in over 20 years, over 30 years, because their mother is still in the church and can't talk to their own children. There's families in the church who their children have had children, and they don't even know their grandparents because they haven't talked to their children, haven't seen their grandchildren, None of that. Simple answered question, but you objected to it and didn't answer. 22. Are members of Colorado Springs Fellowship Church asked or advised to seek approval of who they date or marry? Now, simple answer. You objected to it, didn't answer. Who are the current or past employees of Colorado Springs Fellowship Church? Simple answer. Didn't answer to it, objected to it. 24. Are members allowed to claim church offerings as gifts or taxes? And does the church provide giving statements to members for this reason? Simple answer. You objected to it, didn't answer it. Because you know you don't give giving statements. What are you hiding? 25. Have any church members obtained felony convictions for any matter pertaining to Colorado Springs Fellowship affairs? Simple answer. You objected to it and didn't answer. <laughs> Those were all the interrogatories. They didn't answer not a single one. Not a single one. What are you hiding? Why do I need to enact clergy parishioner privilege over simple questions that had nothing to do with private information from any of the people in Colorado Springs Fellowship Church? Again, what are you hiding? Now, here comes this week. Sorry, y'all, my analogies are just, they're on their own. This week on April 16th, which I think, which I think is this Friday, they are um, deposing me. Now, how are, you, how are you deposing me? Like, what questions, what questions could you possibly have for me to answer? Like, <laughs> I answered my interrogatories. Um...
I answered them. I gave you evidence. I gave over all of my discovery. What could you possibly have to ask, ask me? Uh, you said we were crooks. How did you know we were crooks? How did you know that, Terrell? What could you possibly have to ask me? Anyways, that's where I will be on Friday. Wasting my time for a deposition. Because you're suing me because I told the truth about the affairs and things done at Colorado Springs Fellowship Church that should have never been done. Should have never happened. But you're suing me for it. Mind blowing. I, 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 I'll never get it. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. I'm telling y'all, you have to follow this case. Just look up Banks. I put it in here. Banks versus Jackson. Just type in Banks versus Jackson, Colorado Springs. It'll pull up the case. Go just read the motions. This stuff will blow your mind. Like these people say they say. These people say they want to go to heaven and see Jesus. These people? How? And, and it's not even my opinion. According to scripture, which is the basis and the, the highway and the map to get us to the kingdom. How are you going? It'll hurt your mind just trying to think because y'all must be, y'all must like be them people that built the tower to try and get into heaven. That's my, that's probably what you're going to try and do because you ain't going up there the regular way by living for him because you probably going to try and build another tower. That's probably what you're doing. I got you. I got you. But anyways, y'all, this is what I'm still dealing with. It's almost a year of dealing with this nonsense. And people wonder why I don't want to be bothered. Like sometimes I do not return text messages. I don't return phone calls. I just don't want to be bothered. Because <laughs> I'm dealing with this stupidity. How in the world you're suing me for something that's true and saying my opinion about it. For stuff that's happened, it's not even stuff that, all this stuff is saying is not even happened to me. Most of this stuff has happened to me and my family. But you're suing me for it. I don't understand. But the Lord is faithful. He is. He's proven himself to be faithful. Y'all pray for me. Um, yeah. But anyways, that's all I had. Um, trying to see any other updates. Yeah, you just got to follow the case. Go follow the case. I'm telling you, it, it, it's going to give you your... You wouldn't even want to watch a sitcom because this will give you your laugh. Just go follow the case. His public information. But anyways, y'all have a good night. I'm getting off here. I got to clean up my house. All right, y'all. Bye-bye.